meant to be opening the market. Terry is always on. <laughs> no, always on. <laughs> okay, so we're all set? Okay, uh, let's call the uh, EMS Commission meeting uh, to order at 7.02. And we'll do a roll call. Sure, I'm going to be filling. I'm going to be filling a couple of seats tonight. Michelle wasn't able to attend, uh, and Jeff is not feeling well, so I'm all going to take all over over all of this. Um, so we'll do a roll call with Shannon Strassman. I'm here. So I thought I saw her online. Connie Hilla. Here. Here. Um, Jr. said he was not going to be here. Kate Cronin. Present. Online. Um, Derek Johnson. Here. Brent Kaiser McHenry. Here. Uh, David Lonsdorf. Not hear from him. Terry Schnapp. Here. Sue Luganbuehl. Did I see her on there? Sue, can you hear us okay? Yeah, it's coming and going for some reason on and off, but I hear you now. Perfect. All right, got you here. I am here. Um, so we do have a quorum present. Six, got seven present. Okay. Um, any public comment? I did not receive any public comment. Okay. Let's go on and do a review and approval of the meeting minutes from September 15th, 2022. Anybody have any questions or corrections about the minutes? If not, uh, a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the September 15th minutes. And a second. Second. <laughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Raise your aye. hand. Anyone opposed? Hearing none, the minutes as submitted for September 15th are approved. Now we'll go on and review and approve the meeting minutes from our October 20th meeting. Again, any corrections? If not, I'll make a motion to approve them. Is there a second? I second. All in favor, signify by saying aye or raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The minutes as submitted for October 20th are approved. And we'll move on to the uh, Chief's report. Patrick? Here, let me get my screen up here. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Get down. Thank you. Um, so there were that's where uh, here's our, the usual stuff you see at the end of every month. We were down a little bit uh, for the month of October. You know, so if you look at the down seven percent, but we were still at three hundred and forty-two calls. So um, that's still pretty significant. Still on track for about forty-two hundred calls um, this year, just because with that that unpredictability, you know, of, of above and below. So we're just above, just at that about one percent. Um, Otherwise, the rest of the numbers in there are, are pretty par for the course. Uh, again, the numbers that I've been adding, uh, I just added here in the last month or so that I, I, even I continue to find fascinating. Um, we had two more times just this last month um, that we ran out of resources um, so that the City of Madison, actually City of Madison came in for one, Middleton came in for one, um, but that we had all of our trucks out. Uh, and then again, it was 20 times last month where all three trucks were out. I happened again today three times. Um, so, um, again, when we look at that future growth and capacity versus it's not necessarily going to be a volume thing. Um, when we had to have to add that next truck, it's going to be that um, it's capacity, right? All those calls coming in at the same time. Um, November 1st, 7 a.m. as well, we took over. Um, I don't call it New Fitchburg <laughs> or the, the, the new property into Fitchburg. Um, so the old town of Madison, New Fitchburg, and it, uh, it has been, it, it has not disappointed. Uh, so we expected about 350 calls a year out of that little area um, at, over the last couple of years. And we've, we've truly been getting about one to two calls a day up into that neighborhood, which is, it's just, which is what we expected. So um, 
very positive thing that the city of Fishburg supported that station number three in there because um, there are, it is phenomenal response times into that neighborhood. So um, doing what it's supposed to do, um, which has been great. We did get back out this last month as well. Um, did CPR, naloxone, and stop the bleed training with both libraries up in uh, one in Fitchburg and the one in Verona for their in-service, um, as well as went out and worked with uh, the EPIC staff and their first responder group uh, about doing some stop the bleed programs out there. So kind of starting to get that um, community partnerships back up and running again. Um, Sarah, Dale, David, Amy, and Chip were some of the staff, I'd like to recognize them, that just came in, getting above and beyond off duty to, to help me out with that training. So uh, thank you to them, and um, great that we're getting our, our responders to do that. Rest of the stuff there is pretty, uh, again, pretty equal. The big, or a little bit of an uptick in calls in Verona um, over with that, um, over in the senior housing. So we're following up on Kind of what's going on there with some falls um, not due to weather issues but um, just keeping keeping an eye on that working with uh, staff over there uh, aging you'll see where it is kind of uh, the last couple months you'll have seen it tick up it actually came up i think at the annual meeting as well that 180 plus uh, days as far as aging is up to that 26 percent it keeps growing um, i did reach out to three rivers it was a few weeks ago just to kind of find out um, what was going on there and kind of got the feedback um, Brad who is our primary um, account manager over there essentially his daughter had open heart surgery and was taking care of some grandkids for a couple of weeks so it admitted freely admits on his side he got behind um, so kind of let him know we were, we were watching that a little kind of concerned but that we were looking at it um, he said he was aware of it he was going to get back on it so we'll see how that progresses over the next couple of months to get in there the 180 days are the ones that that truly require a little bit more work um, because of, they're usually just kind of older and, and for whatever reason we don't have information or bad information. Um, everything else seems to be doing okay. Um, you'll see our cash on hand there is, is where we, a little, bit over, um, a little bit over last year, so doing okay with our current funds. Um, as far as our assigned balances go, you, we'll see that ambulance sale here. I think we, we cashed that CD in the end of last year, so that'll fall off of our report here. Um, we did have some expenditures in FAP funds. So that's our funding assistance program that we get from the state. That is, um, it's assigned because we can only use it on um, certain criteria. Half of, it's not quite 50-50, but some of that pot goes to, has to be used for training. Um, some of that can be used for equipment. It cannot be used to supplement a budget. So um, the $7,500, again, some of it needs to be used as training. Within the first year of that, that actually needs to be used on EMT basic training. Um, we don't have those, but our fire departments do. So we actually did sponsor three, I think it was a total of three Verona firefighters through that EMT class with some of those funds. Um, subsequently, it still it continues to help Fitrona as they respond on calls with the fire department and can help us out. Um, the other big part of that is, a, uh, I guess, a collaboration we've been doing with the Fitchburg Fire Department. Um, and they have a, they are um, advancing their technical rescue team, because some, some high angle rescue kind of uh, training. <sighs> Off the top of my head, we had about eight or nine of our medics who actually went through a four day training with them and have been continuing to work with them. Um, so the fire department centrally leads that extrication team uh, or that rescue. Um, but because we've been able to be part of it as well, we've actually been able to send a trained medic or two. And um, Dr. Spigner, uh, Mike Spigner, who's part of our UW consortium group, um, he's actually also been on this team as well. So we sponsored him through this class as well. They were actually just out at Epic on Tuesday doing some, um, some rescue um, some uh, deep, essentially deep hole rescue, right? Just high angle doesn't mean it's on top. It actually could be down as well. And, and the three we've had actually in, uh, two in Fitchburg, one in Brooklyn that the team assisted on were actually basements or lower level um, issues to actually get them up, um, not necessarily up down. But so we sent, uh, spent some money. It was a pretty good investment on that. Nothing but great things from our, our staff about that kind of collaboration and training. So that's what we use some of that FAB funds for. Um, the ARPA funds, um, that's part of that road to recovery funds, um, which case we purchased the um, a new cot with th that, those funds, some of that we had. Um, the expenditure there, we haven't seen the cot yet, but um, we've seen the battery charger. So I have a battery and a battery charger for a cot I don't have yet, <laughs> but that's what that one charges for. 
And then you'll see we did get our epic grant in there for those for our power stair chairs that we should see probably in about April-ish. But those are assigned funds that we have. Um, the money market uh, and CDs we have through WISC uh, did come due uh, this year. So you'll now see that those were increased by the amount of interest that came with those. That money goes back into that CD and continues to roll over. Um, Michelle and I do need to work with, as we get towards the end of the year here, I, I, I don't think we've missed the time frame, um, but we need to adjust the funds because the, the, that WISC account is to pay for the post-retirement health care, of which we paid out um, Kyle this year. So we need to adjust those funds from what we would have put in there to what we would be pulling out to put back into um, our reserves. Essentially, we pay for it out of the reserves and reimburse it from this assigned fund um, to move, essentially moving that money around. But that's um, we did get the interest on that, so you'll see that change here in the fairly near future. Um, no donations. Um, and Jeff has been with us for seven years um, as of November. That's my turn the chat. Anyone else? Oh, um, that's what I have for this. I did send out the, I'll pull that up as well as the current snapshot for um, the in-house budget. You should have had this emailed to you as well. Um, big thing there, we're at 83% through the year, through the end of October. Um, as far as expenditures, one of the big line items, I know I, I got the question about is contracted events. Um, <laughs> I, that was, uh, so previously we were, or, uh, when it comes out in the report, it's actually reflected as miscellaneous income because that's truly the pass-through, right? It's we expend that amount in, 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 it pays for the staff to go there, we charge what it costs us. Um, so that's why it, it, it's in there, but we don't really play with it much um, but it is year to date we've actually done about $115,000 in um, contracted events with the Atlanta Energy Center mm -hmm. um, so that's we also see that overage when we see unscheduled overtime down here at 105% that's what that difference that that's a lot of that difference is that's where that's at so we're not I mean we're over budget but it's over budget because of money that's coming in on the other end if, if that makes sense um, so I guess the big numbers I always look at is 83% uh, through the year and our expenditures down here are at 88%. So we are a little bit over in our expenditures. Some of that is that salary there um, that I referenced. <laughs> the rest of it is if we, we scroll up the top there, one is that large, uh, the cot that broke. Um, so we had to replace a hydraulic unit on that one for about the cost of about $7,000 as well as the just... 143% uh, over on fuel and 102% over on um, medical supplies. Um, but, but our run income is expected to be higher than what I budgeted for. Um, so at the end of the day, we're still, uh, uh, sn the snapshot in time, it's projected to be about $60,000 over budget. But I think when we finally hit there, we'll, we'll be about even. Any questions? Nope. Okay. Thank you. So I, Looks like we're seeing uh, the effects of current inflation and what's happening in our budget. Um, the uh, personnel finance committees did not meet, so there's no chair report. Um, so let's move on to uh, review and approval of the uh, accounts payable checks. Anybody have any questions? I do have a paper copy if you didn't get to it. I guess I had I had one. Uh, there was a visa reimbursement for f about forty one thousand, forty one hundred. Excuse me for staff training. Just curious why it was charged in visa, not a check reimbursement. Uh, so that was actually the um, the training that I talked about in the FAP funds. So that was actually that's how you paid for it. Paying those okay. eight people. Yep, that's how yep. we paid for that training. Okay, thank you. Any, any other questions? If not, a motion to approve the accounts payable checks as submitted. Motion to approve. And a second? Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor, signify by saying aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The... Accounts payable checks as submitted are approved. Then we'll move on to our monthly review of the GASB 54 fund balances. 
Uh, again, any questions about that? So just the usual reminder, it's an accounting thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, the only number that really changes on there is usually that funding assistance that is restricted for FAP funding. So that number was changed to reflect what you saw in the, uh, the chief's report there, the expenditure of those funds for um, that, that training. Um, and I think I might have taken some of the equipment out of that as well. Um, so we still haven't touched the, the sick time liability, and we still don't um, have a final number for contract negotiations for that number to change as well. So that's the only number that changed from last month. All you're doing is is recognizing that we have funds that are assigned for something else. And the accounting standards board it's kind of requires we approve them monthly. So I'll make a motion to approve them if there's a second. Second. Okay, all in favor of approving the GASB 54 uh, allocations is submitted. Signify by saying aye. 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 And anyone opposed? Uh, so the GASB 54 funds as submitted are approved. Now we want to have a little discussion about the possibility of uh, moving to a closed session, if anybody would like to, as we discuss the contract negotiation. Um, otherwise, um, I guess I'm comfortable just discussing it in open session since we'd have to come back and pretty much update what we discussed anyways. Okay, I guess we'll just move, we'll skip the closed session and we'll just move on to discussion and possible action on the um, contract. Okay. Um, and I don't know if we can kind of share or update on it, I guess. Sure, I guess, so the, I, I guess I'll give the, so the, the designated committee that was responsible for contract negotiations was uh, Kate from the city of Verona, as well as Adam Sayer from the city of Verona, the city administrator. Um, Terry was a representative from the town of Verona. And then Randy Udell from the uh, city of Fitchburg, Alder, um, was the representative of Fitchburg. Um, myself was there as a essentially consulting person on kind of the impact on operations for Fitchrona, as well as Leslie um, Salmon, who is the attorney for Axley, who is the attorney for, um, for Fitchrona. Uh, we met th four times, something like that, a couple times just on our side, uh, four times with the union. And I guess at this point I would turn it over to, I don't know if you want to comment on kind of the process itself, <laughs> Terry or Kate, or are, are indifferent to it and just want me to pull it up and, and review it. Yeah, it well, was an interesting process. I guess it's kind of both sides present um, their positions and then there's a lot of breakouts in the closed session where they discuss them. And uh, there are some things that were brought up by the union that were uh, something that we didn't want to do. And then there were some things that we brought up that the union didn't want to do. But I think we have ended up, and we didn't actually end up with an agreement at the last session. And it was going to go into arbitration. but. Wesley has pursued some talks, and I think we may be at a point where if we ratify the, the agreement and the union has a ratification, we'll have a contract, and we're talking about a three-year contract, which is what we wanted. And uh, the, I guess the big issue was um, for us was some language about 12-hour shifts for possible future expansions, which is in the current language, um, for new employees coming in, not current employees, because that was kind of an issue. And then the uh, salary increases for the three years would be 3% for the first year, which would be next year, 3% for the second year, and then 2.75% for the third year, which... Um, the municip municipalities were supportive of that, um, and I think the union uh, has ended up being supportive of that too, but we'll find out when they, they ratify it or not. And I just, anybody else have any comments about the process or where we ended up, the chief? You? Sure, I guess, Kate, did, do you have anything to add to that? Otherwise, I'll review um, what the changes 
from this current to the contract to the next one are and then open it up for any questions. Nope, I think that was a good summary. I just would also like to offer gratitude to everybody who was involved because there were a lot of meetings and a lot of discussions, but I'm glad that we have finally gotten to a point where we can come to agreement and support the hard work that's being done by the Corona district. I agree. Excellent. Thank you. So um, what you see in there, this is just a summary. So it, it's up there as a tentative agreement. Um, the the ask, as it, as it is on here tonight, of, of we have to review this in open session and, to, and explain what the, um, the changes were, uh, the proposed changes. The district then, um, so this was approved. <laughs> Essentially, this was approved by the bargaining subcommittee, per se, of, of the district. Um, so it was recommended by that group to bring back in front of the whole district to for us to approve this. Um, the the uh, local 311, I believe November 30th, is when they will ratify it. So um, we have to do our side. They have to do their side. It's, it's so we can we can vote on it. Or we will vote on it. I'm providing you approve it. It's still pending their um, their approval on November 30th before it, it is taken into place. Um, but here is the summary of the changes. Um, I, I didn't. I don't believe I need to read all of it. <laughs> it is up there. Um, but again, it's a tentative agreement. Tentatively, they have agreed to the same conditions here as well. Um, first thing that uh, a lot of it, this was actually just language being updated as well. The first thing in there, again, um, just updating the language about fair share um, that, that actually no longer exists. Um, they, they do not have to maintain membership in a union that was a, it's a federal law. Um, one of the additions in there is it came for some clarification. This came from the union about um, there was nothing um, in our, essentially nothing in our, the union that, dis, or, I'm sorry, in the collective bargaining agreement that really discussed administrative leave. Um, so added, we have, we have military leave, family leave, <laughs> bereavement leave, a bunch of everything else. Nothing was truly in there. They're under administrative leave or specifically um, administrative leave where it's an unpaid administrative leave that may be necessarily necessary for the employee for reasons not defined in any one of those other leave options. Um, they may be granted that all accrued vacation and paid time off has been exhausted. Um, so we did actually run into uh, this situation last year, a very mm -hmm. unique situation. We brought the, the MOU to this group mm -hmm. um, regarding that. Um, but so it really just defined that because it essentially was kind of in limbo, didn't really exist. Mm -hmm. um, Article 12.08. Um, so this is actually an MOU that existed prior to um, to the negotiations uh, there was an additional ask from the union to modify the language in here so the additional um, language that came from the union and the initial MOU only included vacation time and paid time off in the donation bank um, the union asked for uh, an additional option to donate sick time into that bank again this is for somebody as it explained uh, explains earlier somebody based on a very unique and unprecedented situation of which we had last year um, that that they are placed on unpaid administrative leave via myself um, they are they are forced to use essentially all vacation paid time off and sick time before accepting any donations that was the the regular that was the, the language that was in there um, the union has asked to be able to use uh, donate sick time in 12 hour increments as it says here um, they have to have in order for them to donate their sick time they still have to maintain their their own bank of 384 hours which is 60 days um, that number was actually picked the the um, Fitrona provides income continuation for its employees um, we do um, at, at no cost to the employee, um, we offer a 90-day waiting, waiting period. Employees can pay to shorten that up to, I believe, 30 days. They pay a premium on top of, on top of what Fitrona pays to shorten that waiting period. Most employees um, pay some additional funds to shorten that period up to 60 days because most of them carry a bank of sick time, vacation time, or paid time off that would carry them through that 60 days before income continuation would pick up. So it's just kind of a, a safety mechanism in here that they can't, they can't give their, their funds, they can't give their sick time to somebody else, putting themselves at jeopardy of actually potentially loss of income. Um, so that was, that was the language that was put in here by the union of, of being able to donate sick time um, and, 
and um, keeping that minimum bank. Um, it's a sound idea, so uh, the district agreed to it. That was the only change. The wording is in here, as you can see before, but that was the only change in the wording from the previous MOU that we agreed upon. Um, two additional holidays were awarded, 16.01 as far as holidays, and that was um, MLK and Juneteenth. Um, that is actually in line with what both municipalities um, are doing or intend to do in the very near future here of add those into paid holidays. Um, fixing the language in 17.05 for vacation scheduling. Again, this was actually a previous MOU we had. Um, there are two times a year where employees have to submit vacation or paid time off to have it considered um, based on seniority. Essentially, the hiccup here is we have six people on every day. Um, only We currently allow only ever allow three full-timers to be off the same day because full-timers, um, we don't let two part-timers work together, not usually of operational issues. It's usually more of just finding your way around the district and, and those kinds of issues. Um, so only... At, on, there can only ever be three people off at one time. So if four people off pick on, uh, pick f select the same day off, say July 4th, um, only the first three based on seniority will get it off. The fourth person is denied that vacation time. The previous dates in there were November and July. Um, we came up with an MOU, I think it's actually been a few years now, to allow me more time to um, put that that those open dates out to the LTE pool to fill the shifts. Previous, pre previously, like it was November 30th for January 1st, which essentially then I couldn't fill New Year's Eve and New Year's Day <laughs> until December 1st. Um, so uh, again, an MOU previously agreed upon um, that moved that back one month for the two times a year that that occurs. Um, we did update our protective clothing um, we added a high visibility a special event shirt. We, when we went to the Alliant Energy Center, we actually started um, purchasing those specifically. Well, it actually originally started for our bike medics. Um, it was only the bike medics that had a, a high vis, sh uh, kind of a tech short sleeve shirt um, for riding out bikes in the warm weather. Um, turns into it's a great uniform shirt for uh, for special events as well. Makes our crews very visible, mm -hmm. um, especially when they're walking around the Alliant Energy Center. <laughs> you mm -hmm. can see where they're at anywhere. Mm -hmm. They're a bright fluorescent <laughs> yellow, <laughs> reflective, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so we've started um, giving uh, the first ones on us, right, like with the rest of the uniform, then they can buy them. So we added that into the initial issue for all of our new employees. Um, and then we removed um, just kind of old language about one pair of safety glasses. Historically, we used to buy them a pair of safety glasses. Um, they're now in all of our supply rooms. They can just go get them when they need them. Um, they are still allowed to, if they want their own safety glasses, they want a high-end safety glass, a prescription safety glass. Um, they are allowed to go purchase those out of a uniform allowance. But we, we provide, they're not the cheap ones, but they're not the expensive ones. Um, so we just took that out of the contract, clean that language up. Um, changed the the with the previous contract was the increase in cost sharing for um, our health insurance and dental insurance. Originally, at the start of the last contract, it was ninety five percent. It went up to ninety. It, the cost sharing went to ninety two and a half to ninety percent into eighty eight percent over the four years of the last contract. So that language just came out of this contract. It's a housekeeping thing. Same thing with the dental. Um, uh, another housekeeping thing down here, it really just allowed them to, we don't have um, comp time anymore. That was negotiated out of the last contract. Um, so we had to change um, comp time to paid time off. It just got missed in the last contract as far as a language rise. Um, there was another MOU from 2019. We found some conflicting language in there about uh, when an employee would take medical leave or when they would just go on leave about at what at what point and these are like extended periods of time as it listed in their 180 days um, at, at some point employees stop accruing seniority um, as well as they start uh, I think it was really just addressed seniority um, there was conflicting language in the contract so it, we struck this this uh, this language out of here to, to adopt the other contract, it's I believe it's only 30 days or 60 days, something like that now, where the employee stops accruing seniority. Um, again, this is a housekeeping thing. 
um, changed it. The previous contract was a four-year contract. Um, we finally met at the table um, as part of it. Was it, this will only be a three-year contract? Um, and then Terry had talked about as well a across-the-board increases of three percent, three percent, and two point seven five over the next three years. Um, uh, he brought up as well. There is a side letter of agreement that has been in there historically for a while. Um, we it, it stayed in there. Um, there was some discussion on it. It just stayed in there. Essentially, what it the request is as as we move forward, the union does acknowledge as the district expands. Um, there's the potential to bring 12-hour shifts. Said so back um, when I started, I started on 12-hour days. So the first handful of years. Um, we had full-timers on 12-hour shifts. That is not the ideal shift. So they they like to preserve the, when at all possible, they are offered 24-hour shifts with the understanding that if we had to go back to 12-hour shifts, that the best accommodations would be made um, to get them 24-hour shifts. It only protects um, essentially staff hired after the date that the contract is initiated. Um, so people can essentially be hired onto 12-hour shifts, but the preference is to not send current staff back to that 12-hour shift. It's fine. Um, uh, there was a deleted, the last contract is when we established the post-retirement health care, and we had um, staff over the cap. So we, we did discuss and came up with a side letter of agreement of how the staff that was already over that cap would be paid out. Um, that was paid out over a process of three years at a, at a certain percent, um, at a certain pay rate. Uh, that side letter expired. So that was another housekeeping thing that came out. Um, so that is what I have essentially, that is truly the changes in the contract um, that I believe are now read and out there in public. Um, Again, the union needs to ratify this. I will echo uh, Kate, thank, uh, thank both sides on the union side as well as uh, the, the people on our team um, uh, that came and helped with this. It, it can be a emotionally charged and, and contentious, <laughs> um, but I think overall it stayed very professional and, and ultimately we did come to agreement that that will benefit both sides, of, um, keep, the, keep, our, um, keep our unionized staff um, supported and encouraged to continue to work here in a, in a positive environment as well as um, helps the district and myself to to operate them with them. Um, Jeff and I are appreciated as well. So I guess I would open it to any questions. Yeah, it was actually a very professional process, even though there was um, two sides kind of debating issues that were important to the each side, and it really came, I think we ended up coming to an agreement that I think will be good for both parties too. And we'll continue to support our employees, which is very important, and it's something that the municipalities uh, can live with, and it'll make it easier for management to keep providing good services and scheduling and getting equipment, and it will help the overall help the budget, I guess. I mean, that was a concern too. So I don't know, is there anybody have any questions, discussions? Then I think we'd be ready to hold a formal uh, vote to approve, as far as the commission is concerned, the contract uh, that was negotiated. So I guess I will make a motion to approve um, the Contract, I guess that's, I have to see the right language for that. Uh, approve the collective bargaining agreement um, as discussed. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor of approving the collective bargaining agreement uh, as presented, signify by saying aye. 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 And is anyone opposed? Uh, signify by saying opposed. Hearing none, uh, the uh, Fitzrona EMS Commission approves the bargaining agreement as submitted. Thank you. Any other business anybody wants to bring up? Or do you all want to get to see the, watch the Packer game, I guess? <laughs> Keep, keeping it short with that, we'll talk about the next meeting is scheduled for December 15th. Um, as of this point, I don't have anything, I guess, probably 
tentatively based on what happens with the, the contract on, on November 30th. Um, if there's some issues, um, I guess maybe at this point just turn it into a save the date um, with the potential for the November meeting to not occur unless there's strong opposition. Yep. <laughs> yep. Sounds good. Um, I'll make a motion to adjourn for the evening. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. 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 The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody.